What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Um, today, I just got off work this morning from the fire department. I ran by the powder coating shop, picked up the Brembo's. Well, uh, they all got done. The bolts are kind of dirty, so we're going to clean those up on a, on a wire brush, uh, like on one of my wheels. I got my, right there, my Hawk rear pads, Performance Ceramic, same same pad from Hawk that I'll be running on the front. Those are the StopTech cryo treated front rotors for TL Type S. And then those are just Acura R6 uh, power, power slot, which is, I think, still StopTech. But I got this from a dude in Canada. So I, I think it's the same company. Um, so hopefully we can, we can slap all that in. Over here, we still have the front coilovers I haven't put in. So uh, we'll go ahead and slap those in. I'll quickly put the calipers together, the Brembo's together, and then we have the power stop rear calipers. So everything is is here. Uh, so hopefully we can get all knocked out one day. Uh, we should be able to. So let's go ahead and start the show. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got all four wheels pulled, cars up in the air. Uh, we'll run through this real quick, so I don't want to make this some in-depth video. Um, so to pull the whole strut assembly, you have your outer tie rod here, and take the scotter pin, undo that, that nut, these two big nuts here. And I would go ahead and, and pull this bracket that's holding your brake line and the ABS line. So that's kind of fixed on the, the shock housing. So it's like a little 10 mil here, 10 mil uh, here as well. So just basically just disconnect all that stuff um, and then you're gonna have What there's a three three bolts three nuts up top at the shock tower. So you'll you'll undo those three. I'll uh, Show a picture real quick right there um, So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff pulled uh, We'll then I'll, I'll do a little video real quick showing you kind of how to set the height adjustment Okay, here's what the strut pulled uh, if you're on the ground, I mean, you, you might put a jack stand underneath this to kind of support the weight. It's not, there's no tension on these lines, so you're not going to hurt the brake lines. Uh, the axles kind of stretch a little bit, but it'll be fine. So looking at them on the ground, I can already tell I'm going to have to adjust this one up because I ain't trying to slam the car. I, I really want to keep the, the same height. We're looking, we're going for like a one inch drop basically. Um, so the way these work, which ultimately, I mean, you're buying brand new coilers. They come with directions and or you could just look the stuff up online, the directions, you know what I mean? So way more straightforward, but just the gist of it. So, you know, a coilover is going to have a sleeve in here. You can unlock these perches, which allow allows the body of this to either screw on or unscrew off this sleeve, which which overall will extend or shorten the overall height of the of the whole strut that's how coilover works um so what i'm gonna do is unlock these perches we'll uh go ahead and extend this stuff out making this this whole assembly longer which would decrease the drop you know we're trying to raise this back up trying to get closer to the overall length of of this side so right now that's a kyb shock with uh h and r drop spring um, yep. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll, uh, I'm going to do all that off camera. Like I said, if you have any questions, you can, you can ask me and I, I'll help you out. But ultimately, if you have questions on how to adjust coilovers and all that stuff, you, you can download PDF instructions online and, and that's going to be your best bet of, of how to make these adjustments. Just, just look up the directions and then follow them. Not all coilovers will be completely the same. Um, but, but, but the principle is the same, you know, as as far as adjustment these do have camber and and all that kind of stuff but i'm gonna leave those exactly where they are because it look it looks like they come pre-centered you know i want that, that that thing to be dead center but after all this after any suspension changes always go get your car realigned um even if it looks close it doesn't matter you, you want your stuff right 
just go get the alignment done. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this adjustment, slap these in, and then we'll get started on the brake stuff. All right, guys, uh, got both sides in. We got all this stuff buttoned back up. Uh, I haven't locked these all the way yet. I'm gonna have to lower the car and keep taking the caliper uh, and measuring from here, make sure both sides are even, and I'll keep tinkering with that later. Um, so the next step, we're gonna go ahead and pull the caliper. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is break the brake line loose, let some of that, you know, let some of the fluid drip. So we'll put a little pan down there to catch it. And then I'm gonna actually put the brake line up to try to put it up as high as we can to keep fluid from dripping. And then there's two big bolts on the back of the bracket for the caliper. We'll be able to remove the whole caliper and then uh, we'll pull the rotors. So we'll be right back. Okay guys, real quick, I just wanted to touch on something. So like whenever you pull your calipers and pull your rotor, you know, a lot of rotors have these little screws in there and that's, they're just to, to hold the rotor on the hub uh, toward they don't, you know, it's not gonna just be freely floating in there. Technically, you don't have to have these things. Um, a lot of people, like especially on original car, that were uh, the original rotor still on there has never been pulled. These can be a pain in the ass to get out. You're not going to get them with just a screwdriver. So just wanted to show you all a pretty cool tool. Um, this is like a like an impact screwdriver. So you have like different tips you can put in here. And what it is, you know, the thing presses down. So you can hit this with a hammer. So you'd put that into the Phillips, and then as you basically tap the end of this. You know you tap and then start turning it which i already loosened it but you get the idea it'll help kind of knock something like that loose something that's old that's all original uh yeah so i just want to touch on that real quick okay so i got one of these things just softly bolted together it's not the guts aren't in it yet so i want to show you something so everybody that has their factory dust shield steel this thin piece of metal right here uh this is not uh, let's see if I can switch hands. As you can see, if you try to bolt this up, I'm lining up the holes, that thing's not going to fit. That dust shield's completely in the way. So what I did, let me set this down gently. I'm trimming down this line. Now, I'm not going to fully cut it all the way like you see this little indention where my finger is i'm keeping that so that little tiny ring will still be all the way around the hub where it's one piece but i'm cutting here and cutting here so i haven't cut it yet so this side i just finished to give you an idea so it's going to open up this space plus i'm knocking my studs out so the only way to get these off, you would have to trim that or just you have to pull your whole complete hub and, and remove this piece altogether. Um, or you can just completely remove it. It's there for a reason, so I wouldn't suggest that. But, you know, teach your own. Your car's your car. So now I have the space behind here to knock a stud out, you know, and then you'll just rotate and, and knock every stud. And then I'm going to go back and replace with the extended ARP uh, wheel studs. So to give you an idea, so I cut along those lines. I used like 10 snips. I guess you could use like a die grinder if you want to go that route. Um, obviously, try not to cut into other stuff. To, you know, try not to cut into the hub. But uh, I just used 10 snips. It's pretty easy, and you can actually even use pliers. Once you get a cut, bite on, bite on to the the little ear you cut, and you can like roll pliers, and it'll just man, it, you can kind of like tear it. But you can see I didn't fully cut it. So this looks like crap. What I did, I, I took a punch. It's on the floor, yeah. I just took a punch with a flat, a flat end on it and I'm basically beating down, see I can touch it. I've been beating down the edge because that's gonna be really sharp. So that's all I'm doing is keeping the, the sharp edge away from stuff. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna keep your dust shield and you're running these Brembos, from the Acura TL Type S, this is a modification you're gonna have to do. So you're gonna have to trim the, your dust shield just to fit the caliper. And then if you're doing the, the five mil spacer off the hub behind the rotor and all that, I highly recommend might, while you're in here, you might as well pull these studs, knock them out with a hammer, and then go back with an extended stud. That way you know for sure your wheel has plenty of meat to bite on. But uh, I'll be right back. Okay, the next uh, fun part, so I had to 
kind of Dremel this down a little bit. There's plenty of meat there. You're not going to hurt nothing. Uh, right on the corner. Anyway, give yourself some space there. And then I'm taking my... Where the fuck is my bench grinder? And they're having to basically notch, you know, cut a corner of that off. So as you knock your stud out, see I'm lining it up, I'm knocking the stud out in this little pocket. You're going to have to put the part you're notching in like this. It's still really hot. So where that little notch part is going to line up with the, the area you've trimmed. And then you'll just take a hammer and lightly tap it. Just make sure it ain't all crooked. If it, I already did one, so it's it's going. Just be careful. Don't obviously don't bend the stud, and don't force anything. I mean, you should be able to like lightly tap it. It'll start working. So uh, that's basically the second to last modification you're gonna have to do if you're copying this exact setup. Because the last will be we'll be drilling the holes. Uh, what uh, a half inch and then nine sixteenths or something like that but we'll do that after so i'm gonna get all these studs put in and then we'll keep going okay guys so here's the completed swap of studs so that's what you'll look like now i got everything laid out i'm gonna post the link to the video that i'm following to rebuild these so this is what you should be looking like uh actually so i'll pull all that stuff out i'll uh, i'll post a picture with all the seals laid out next to it right here okay so now with all the stuff basically what i'm about to do you know since they blast all this stuff i'm going to go blow air through all this just to completely make sure everything's dust free and grit free because i can kind of feel some stuff down in here um so i'm going to go blow these out and then I'm going to wet like a rag with some brake cleaner and then like kind of wipe all that down just to make sure. And uh, I'll show you the, the assembled caliper here in a second. Okay, so here's the completed look. Brand new pins, brand new little keeper bracket, brand new hawk pads. Uh, put the bleeders back in at the top. And I do got black uh, Brembo decals that are going to go here, but I'll do that the very last step uh, once everything's on But yep, that's her She's big <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna drill the knuckle Plus so this hole this hole starting off with a half inch bit and Then uh, make sure you lubricate as you're drilling and take a little breaks and then uh, we'll step up to a 9 sixteenths and should be able to bolt her on okay Holes are drilled. Here's my spacers. Um, you can see, you can find some of these where the outer diameter fits in the inside the back of the rotor. I went to machine shop and, and uh, machined them down. We had them lathed. Um, so there's a bevel, and these are hub-centric. If you look at the back of a rotor, there's a bevel. So what I'm gonna do to mimic fitment, I would say bevel down, so bevel Double side should go onto the hub. So pop that on there. Pop the rotor. Sorry, I'm trying to hold my phone and do this at the same time. You can see I'm kind of holding pressure, but it's basically like the right flush, you know, right flush with the hub. You can so uh, go ahead and set that on there. We'll throw the caliper on, and I'll lightly uh, by hand put it on and see what the fitment looks like. Okay, uh, kind of did a test fit with the wheel. I'm definitely gonna have to have to um, run another spacer. I mean, it's, it is close. You know, I can move the wheel. I didn't fully zap it down either. If I did, it's, it's definitely gonna rub on the caliper right here. Super, super close. Uh, so again, good thing we did the extended studs because now we're gonna have to run 
a tiny spacer behind the wheel. These are a 17 by 8 with a plus 35 offset, I want to say. So, I mean, I do know some wheels are probably going to be able to fit and uh, without any modification, but I'm not about to buy a whole other set of wheels. And you can already tell they're kind of cambered in, but these already basically sit pretty flush. But with a little spacer, they're going to pop out just a tiny, tiny bit, which is fine. Won't be nothing crazy. I do eventually plan on doing like a, uh, like the little wide body fender. So that'll kind of make up for that. But they look good. They're definitely big. Definitely a, a big difference. All right. So now that we're pretty much at a standstill, I actually kind of tightened this stuff up and the rudder definitely sits way closer to centered in there so it's not perfect but it it's definitely close enough and uh i barely have clearance here on the dust shield but it is fine let me turn it so she'll be all right but i am gonna have to run a uh, a wheel sp uh, another spacer on the front of this rotor to fit my wheels um I just ordered some off Amazon, so I'm going to try to, I bought a, a, another 5 mil spacer and then I bought 3 mil. So we'll, whichever will work, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, but since that'll be at a standstill, let's go ahead and I will pull all the rear stuff now. Um, basically got stop tech uh, rotors and, then, and those hawk pads and then the stop, the power stop calipers. Uh, so I'll do both rears today so I can have all that knocked out I'll, and I'll get started on the other side, the driver's side, with all the swapping the studs and drilling the knuckles and basically get that side sitting just like that one um, so everything will be ready for those new spacers. All right, uh, I'll be right back. We'll go ahead and swap all this stuff over. It's basically the same procedure if anybody's never done it. You know, you, you, you use your little... A screwdriver, like an impact screwdriver, pop these two screws. Uh, there's going to be two two bolts for the caliper, undo the brake line, you know, have something to catch the fluid, move all that stuff out of the way, pull the rotor, and I'll basically be doing a straight swap. So swapping straight to the power stop caliper, I'll put my, my pads in and then uh, have all that ready to go and then put the rotor on and the back will be done. I'll button up the wheels and she'll be sitting pretty. Be right back. Okay, here's the rears all done. Power stop calipers, hawk pads, power stop rotors. Uh, both sides of the rear are done, buttoned up. I'm probably going to finish this tonight. I'm not going to do another video. Um, it's going to be the same thing as the driver's or the passenger side. So I'll end up trimming these areas here, knocking those studs. Dremeling this area down a little bit to give me some clearance to put the studs in um, And basically get the driver's side to the same Readiness <laughs> as this side uh, So I'll be waiting on which I already ordered is some um, some three mil spacers uh, but Yeah, everything everything looks pretty good so I'm definitely very excited. Uh, hopefully the, th the three millimeters works. I have a 17 by eight wheel with positive 35 millimeter offset. So I think I saw somebody on one of the, the forums that, that listed a bunch of wheels that fit this setup um, and 17 by eight with a plus 38 millimeter offset um, worked. So I'm hoping those three mil wheel spacers will basically put me right at you know a positive 38 it'll be close uh it wasn't technically uh you can tiny that little black speck and that tiny black mark that's where the wheel must have just barely touched it so i don't want to do that you know i want to risk because i know uh calipers when, when they kind of heat up this might barely expand just a tiny tiny bit or some people might say wheels can wheels might barely uh 
flex, I guess, under big stress. Um, either way, it's better to be safe than sorry. But uh, all right, guys, that is it for today. Um, hit that subscribe button, and uh, I'll be doing tons of other stuff. So now the new plan is I will be revamping the fuel system in the car to go to a flex fuel setup. So I'll be going in depth with all that uh, once I order everything and I and I beef up the fuel system even more. Um, currently it's on a 65 seat pump, FID 1000s, stock hard line for the feed line, returnless system. So it's very simple fuel setup. Um, cars on pump gas and made almost 500 horsepower. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a flex setup so I can still be on pump gas for just normal cruising around and still make decent power. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just shoot for like 575, 600 wheel horsepower on ethanol. Um, and then that'll be the next big thing I do after the, these brakes are completely done. And then the next plan, I'm looking into finding a, uh, a wrecked or flooded out or just some type of CRV somewhere that I can pull all the parts from because I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm gonna all drive the, the car. So uh, I just wanna be a little different Ain't a lot of people doing it, especially in the RSX. There's not going to be a lot of them in the country. Um, I got on that new page on Facebook. Been watching a bunch of videos to see what what all what all it's going to take. And basically, the RSX chassis seems to be the easiest chassis to all-wheel drive, since a lot of the components, the rear trailing arms and uh, subframe, all that off the CRB from 02 to 05 with the RD7 in the VIN is essentially a, a bolt-on set up for this car uh, you got to notch an area for the drive shaft in the center and then you got to relocate the, the fuel cell you know your fuel tank whatever but uh other than that pretty straightforward so that is the plan so stick with me we'll get through this <laughs> um i'm very excited for the future of the car uh definitely should be hurting some feelings it already kind of does now but you know i'm not i want to go fast so uh Hit that subscribe button, guys. I'll see you next time.